Hi and welcome back again. This is the second part of the video, how to secure the Grandstream UCM. So last time I talked about, in the first part of this video, I talked about how you can secure uh, extensions, how you can secure access uh, to the UCM from the public network, and also how you can secure making calls from the IVR. So I'm just gonna continue in the second part and talk about the other different uh, security settings available on the UCM. There is one setting here that I would like to uh, mention. It's a very important that one. You have that feature that says allow guest call. It is strongly recommended not to turn on this option for any deployment. Enabling that option, uh, allow guest calls, will stop the PBX from authenticating incoming calls from unknown or anonymous callers. In that case, hackers, Get the chance to send invite to the UCM and the UCM will take the call without authentication. This can result in a high toll charges. So it's always recommended to leave that one unchecked. If a carrier told you, for example, check this one, make sure you call the grand stream support and you check the options uh, and the cases where you need to enable that option. So now let's move to uh, the firewall settings of the UCM. So we go to settings, then firewall. The fact that the UCM has a firewall settings doesn't mean that you can use it to work as a firewall for your network because the UCM does not have enough resources to the filter in for all the traffic. So there are some basic stuff that you can configure on the firewall of the UCM and all the way down here, let's start with those. Uh, the ping defense uh, enable. So once enabled, uh, the ICMP response will not be allowed to ping request. That means you're not gonna be able to uh, ping the UCM. This is useful in some cases where you see that a lot of people are pinging the UCM, just go there and check that one so that the UCM will not respond to those ping messages. Next, there is the ping of death option. So when you enable that one, the UCM will only allow uh, reply to five ICMP requests per second. And then we have the option, the custom firewall settings. Sometimes when you do your, uh, uh, let's say like uh, traffic capture and you notice that there is an IP that keeps trying to uh, send like uh, malicious set messages to the UCM, you can actually create a custom rule just specifically for that IP address. For example, it's called always for SIP incoming traffic on the one side, then you can go to custom prompt, uh, I'm sorry, to custom service. Let's say the traffic is coming from this IP and you would like to block this IP. You can just include it there, 12.12.12. .12 if you specify the port, for example, this is the source port, 5060, the UCM will only block that traffic. But I always recommend just leave that one blank, leave the bottom one blank, and leave the port number blank. This way, any traffic coming on any port and go into any other port coming from that specific source IP, the UCM will just uh, block that IP. Next, we move to fail to ban. Fail to ban is mainly designed to uh, detect and prevent intrusion for authentication errors in SIP, uh, register message, invite message, and subscribe message or subscribe method. Users can customize the maximum retry times that one host can attempt in a period of time. If a host initiates attempts that exceed the maximum uh, retry times, let's say for example three, it will be banned by the UCM for a certain amount of time, which is the ban duration. You can ban it, for example, 60,000 seconds. And, use, and you can also add a whitelist at the bottom right here. But before we go there, let, let me just explain that. So when you have it configured this way, let's say, uh, let's put just 16 here. For example, if someone tries to register 
to UCM three times in 60 seconds the UCM will block that IP for 60,000 seconds if you have for example your network and you still uh, you don't want to block like uh, IP addresses from your network you can actually include it in the whitelist if you have specific public IP address uh, that you still want it to try connecting to the UCM or registering to the UCM, you can include it also in the, uh, in the whitelist. When you enable fail to ban, make sure you enable the asterisk servers. That's a very important. Also, make sure you enter the same max try in the global uh, settings. I hope that's uh, clear. So next, let's talk about securing access to the web UI of the UCM uh, user management. So by default, when you get the UCM, the password is admin admin. It is always recommended to change the default password after login for the first time strong and complex password the combination of numbers lowercase alphabet characters uppercase characters and special characters is always a wise choice to protect your login from unauthorized users so we're just going to go to user management change password and then change it from admin to a new complex word trust me i still see a lot of people uh, they still use admin or admin 123. This is not secure at all. If people are able to log into UCM, they can do a lot of things. So make sure you have very strong and complex password for the HTTPS access. Also to protect your UCM against brute force attack for login access, ensure that the UCM uh, prevents <clears throat> Uh, it's under login settings. Where is it? Yeah, right here. Yeah, make sure that it prevents failed attempts to log in through the configuration of maximum number of failed attempts. Uh, for example, right here, you can tell the UCM, uh, for example, maximum try is three user pre uh, login uh, time. You can tell it, for example, uh, uh, like 60,000 or you can just put zero so if you put zero in here that means if a person tries to log in uh, three times to the UCM from the same IP address and it keeps failing the UCM will ban that IP address from connecting to the UCM uh, again uh, and next we have uh, the HTTP server option here the UCM by default, as you know, uses port 889. Personally, I would change the port to a different unknown port that is not used in the local network. Uh, so, of course, use for HTTPS, then you can change that one to uh, uh, whatever. You can choose any port that is not being used in your network. For example, I'm going to use 9999. Then there is the redirection from port 80, because if you notice something, the IP address of my UCM 192.168.22.133. Look what happens when I type in the IP. The UCM will automatically redirect port 80 to 8089 and then HTTPS. This is not recommended. I always recommend people to disable uh, redirection on port 80. So I'm going to save and apply this. So I'm using 9095. This way, that's going to make your UCM even more secure. So now it's going to prompt you, see, with a different port number. But if I try to use, for example, only the IP address, 132, the HTTP redirection is not going to work. This is only from the cache. That means it's not working at all, which is good. So this is, uh, I think I've covered... Uh, most of the security settings on the UCM. If you try to implement most of the stuff mentioned in these two videos, trust me, your UCM would be way, way, way secure than using just the default settings. And thank you for watching the video.